Hi. So I just wanted to do a quick recording of a uh, small uh, bot uh, creation. So this is a bot for purchasing, uh, in this case, uh, RTX 3080 from uh, Best Buy. So as you know, RTX 3080s uh, came out, uh, I guess, a couple of weeks ago, maybe a week ago, I forget now. But uh, it sold out within seconds. <clears throat> so uh, it turns out there were all these bots that were uh, scalping them off, you know, various websites. And so people like us who didn't have a bot uh, were left stranded. So uh, I decided to make one. So here it is. So this is a very simple script in Python. So I'll walk through the line by line, like what all this stuff does. But basically, it um, opens uh, a web page to uh, the particular product that you want to purchase and looks for a button, uh, add to cart button. But if it's gray, meaning it's disabled or it's sold out, then uh, it'll sleep some or it'll just wait a certain amount of time. Uh, in this case, three seconds, and then do a refresh of the page, uh, and then look for the button again to see if it's um, purchasable or back in stock, if you will. Then uh, it'll add it to the cart. Once it's added to cart, uh, it's up to you to kind of jump on it and then do the checkout process. So this is a very uh, crude, uh, simple script. Um, so I'll, let's walk through it. So let's sh uh, start by showing you what the page looks like. So here's the sample page. So let me just get a new browser tab so I can go there. <clears throat> So here's a reference RTX 3080 uh, sold out um, and it basically you know, press F5 or refresh until this turns yellow in Best, Guy, Best Buy's case and then if it turns yellow it'll click it and add it to your cart. Um, so that's pretty simple. So let's go over uh, from the top. What does this script do? Uh, this is just a time I need uh, for sleeping, import of time for sleeping here, three seconds. Selenium is what I'm using to automate the browser. So whenever you automate a kind of commercial website, um, something like this where they are probably trying all kinds of stuff to prevent bots, uh, it's best to try and use something that's going to drive the kind of authentic um, uh, browser. Main reason is uh, they don't want uh, scripters to automate low-level APIs. I mean that's the ideal way to kind of uh, attack these things but um, generally they'll hide the APIs or they'll obfuscate APIs and, and make it hard for you to uh, go at their APIs directly. So you're having to go through the UI. So if you're going through the UI, you might as well just go through uh, something that automates a browser like this. So Selenium, from my research, looks like uh, is the best candidate. Um, Selenium is supported in various platforms, including Python. And because it's such a popular and widely uh, implemented solution, they their architecture is kind of uh, complicated shall we say so unlike some of the other uh, um, web scraping tools or automation uh, packages uh, you need to have a um, external binary um, so in this case uh, you can google all this stuff and you'll find it installation instructions for setting up selenium for various browsers but you can see this executable it actually needs an executable. This is a Windows box, so it needs an executable for um, the 
the script to be able to drive Firefox effectively. So uh, I'm guessing it's kind of opening a socket in the local machine so that the Python script or the Python client Selenium library can talk to the Gecko driver exe. But uh, I mean, I'm just guessing. But that's so that executable can kind of uh, do system calls to the Firefox and and be able to kind of uh, hook itself into the internals of Firefox. But anyway, we don't care about that. So all we need to do is make sure you follow some web guidance or tutorial on how to set it up. I think, let me see if I can find the one that I followed. So just search for Selenium. Um, Python uh, installation for Windows. Yeah, so I think this is the one. So you need to so pip install or pip three install for uh, if you have Python three. Um, installs the selenium client package so this is the package um, then you need to install they call it drivers so driver is the kind of native system binary that you need um, so you can follow this and you're going to end up downloading this thing called gecko driver like i did there in windows case you just drop it into the same package same uh, folder as your script so this is my script right here uh, and it'll get picked up and that's pretty much it actually so that's as far as you need for obviously you need Firefox get the latest one I think I'm I'm pretty current okay so first thing you do is uh, use the web driver and say Firefox give me a new Firefox um, object and at that point you just do get on the on the Firefox driver and this is the URL that I just uh, opened up earlier and uh, this whole business is just to do looping right so first I I want to have some variable that says like have I found the add to cart button yet no then I'm gonna keep looking for it and the way I look for it is this so you say the same uh, driver dot find element by class name and I'm looking for so where did I get this ID or uh, name so what you do is let's close this um, so if you get into the browser debugger you can also I use the hotkey but you can use the menu so you go to web developer and inspector so that's another way to go there so once you're in the inspector you can kind of uh, select the item of interest and this is the item of interest right here so you select that it goes to the HTML element of interest uh, so in this case it's a button and this button <coughs> uh, doesn't have an ID but it does have a class that kind of is unique enough so what I'm looking for is this uh, button class ID add or name add to card button that's where I got it from right there so you could look for any of these other ones but this is the one that I sounded the most um, uh, uniquely identifying <coughs> excuse me all right so so selenium uh, should have found the button if it doesn't find the button this thing will crash meaning it'll throw an exception and it'll just exit which is fine uh, that means there's something wrong with the code or the page changed enough that you there's no longer a button element by with that class name um, then you'll have to come in and do some more debugging and add some more code to handle that case but I haven't hit that case so this is this is working great 
Um, so the ne next thing I'm looking for is uh, whether this is a button that's disabled or not. So I did I did this earlier, and so here's the difference between a good button and a bad button. So notice the good the bad button, which is what you're seeing right there, has uh, not only this class, but it also says button disabled. Right, and here's the here's the example of a good button. And uh, the way you, the way I got the good button is I just went to some other product. So let's just go somewhere like this one. I'm sure it has a button. Is in so this button right here. So if you go to that button, notice it doesn't have a disable, but it does have just the add to cart button. So there's no mention of a disable class name, right? So the way I detect whether the button uh, is clickable, meaning it's it's uh, it's in stock, is if it doesn't have this, right? So if that same element that I found, the button that I found, uh, has in the list of the classes that it has for that button, doesn't include this one then I know it must be uh, healthy and, and ready to be clicked on um, which is like this case the yellow button all right so but if uh, the button disabled is uh, was found in the list of attributes of the class um, in this case I'm just doing a string search because this uh, Add to cart button get attributes returns the full string like this string. So I'm just doing a string search. Is button disabled in that string? If not, or rather, if it is, uh, then I need to wait, right? I need to uh, retry. Uh, so I'm going to sleep for about three seconds and then refresh the page. So that's pretty easy. And then uh, look for it again. I guess I don't need to look for it again. Uh, then go back to look for it again because look for it again happens up top. Okay. Um, and that's it. Otherwise, so if button disabled was not found, then I just say button found that goes true. At which point this while loop goes, oh, button found is true. Okay, so then I need to exit. Once you exit, all I have to do is click and you'll see what happens if I uh, when I substitute a good one but uh, let's just show you what this looks like when it's running so when selenium is automating a browser it adds this little cute robot thing up top now it's going to wait three seconds and retry. I think it did already. There you go. So it retried. Now another three seconds and I'll keep it trying. And this just goes on forever. Okay, all right, so let's stop it there. So now let's show you a demonstration of what it looks like when it's when it found something. So here's a link uh, for a healthy uh, product that's in stock. So I'm just gonna flip this on and disable the other one. So now let's try this one. So this one is a demonstration of looking at a product uh, that's in stock and then and then show you that how it adds to cart so notice it clicked it it's adding it to cart and one showed up in the cart and that's it so at this point uh, the script needs to send out a notification uh, so that's a missing part 
because uh, obviously you won't, you're not going to be here like, you know, around the clock. Um, so after the click, um, the script should send out some way to notify the user that uh, you got the item in the in the cart. So you better come and check it out, otherwise, uh, or check out rather, because um, it's probably going to get removed from your cart. Is there anything else uh, to show? Mm. No. Well, the other thing that's missing here is uh, this URL should uh, be sent in from the command line, and ideally you would have like a script, a parent script that would run this script uh, based on like a list of pages you want to watch, because you probably are not going to just watch this, uh, not this one, but whatever the uh, other one, the RTX 3080, because there's probably about two dozen different types of cards that you want to watch. So make a page or make a, make a data file or text file of all the links and from that link or from the, from that uh, list of um, page or links, uh, spin up. Um, this script for each one of those links so it would have I don't know n number of browsers popping up and refreshing um, so those are the two missing things and uh, I'll work on it next and then I'll upload more videos um, as, we, as I build up the script that's it all right thank you